Uh, well, good evening, church, and welcome to a, a special a night of insight on this Good Friday evening. Uh, Passover was uh, this week on a Wednesday, and our Lord was raised uh, on the first day of the week after, uh, after Passover. Uh, and so this is the week where all of these great, great uh, events uh, happened that, uh, that bolster and what our, what our faith is in. And so Christians all over the world are celebrating uh, this, uh, this Holy Week and doing it this week. And even though uh, we're doing it in a social distancing kind of way, uh, nevertheless, this is a, a special, special week. And it, it was suggested uh, that we do something a little e e extra special uh, for, uh, for this, uh, for this ho Holy Week. Now, one special thing that we are doing uh, is that we are going to have Brother Rob uh, preach, uh, preach the Lord's Day morning message. Now, I asked him to do this a while back and, and to be ready just in case because my daughter is due to uh, deliver her baby uh, here just, just any time quick, and I didn't know if whether I was going to be available or not. And uh, he was uh, gracious to say that, that he could fill in. And as of this recording, she has not yet given birth. But, but Bob, if you're watching this, I want you to know that I was a little bit sneaky because, you know, if my daughter waits another week to deliver, then Bob, I have you on the hook for a two-for-one special. I get two sermons with one request, so you might need to be on, uh, be on guard, guard, guard for, for next week. So, so anyway, that, that's one special thing we're doing. We get to hear Brother Bob on Sunday. But we're also going to have this uh, special uh, Good Friday night presentation. And for our topic tonight, I thought it would be good for us to, to think a little bit about the significance of the third day. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ spoke quite frequently about uh, his, his mission and his ministry and about go, he said he was going to go to Jerusalem and that he would be killed and he would be raised and not just raised, but raised on the third day. Uh, in fact, it is recorded in, in the Gospels about a, a dozen different times uh, that, that, that our, our Lord said, even before he was killed, that he would be raised the third day. He says, I'm going to go and I'm going to die and I will be raised the third day. In fact, Mark chapter 8 and verse number 32 says that our, that our Lord spoke about these things very openly. Uh, so he, he probably made reference to this, uh, you know, uh, many, many, many times. He just openly spoke about being raised on the third day. In fact, he spoke about it, I guess, so frequently that his enemies remembered these frequent words that he said about being raised on the third day because it came up in one, in one of his trials before his crucifixion. Some of the, the people came, the guys came, and they accused him of saying, hey, this guy said that he would destroy the temple and he would be raised on the third day. And the, the temple that he was referencing was his body. In fact, even when they put our Lord upon the cross, they mocked him about this third day uh, of a re reference over and over again. Even when he was on the cross, they, they mocked him about him saying he would be raised the third day. In fact, he, he spoke about this so frequently that even the, the religious leaders of the day, after he died, they, they remembered this. And they said, oh, you know, then we have to go to Pilate. And they did. And they asked Pilate, said, Pilate, can you seal the tomb and set a guard over it? Because we remember that this deceiver, he said that he would be killed and he would be raised on the third day. And so they sealed the tomb and they put a guard over the tomb. And, you know, a real unusual step that you would have to guard a tomb so the guy wouldn't get out. But, but they did so because Jesus had so openly spoken about being raised on the third day. And, and so there's this emphasis that is placed on the, the third day. He, even after our Lord was raised from, from, from the dead, he, he chided his disciples in Luke, Luke 24, and he said, how slow are you to believe everything that, 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 that the prophets uh, you know, wrote about? And then he said in verse 45 and 46, he, he, then he opened their minds so he could understand the scriptures, so they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Jesus said that the Old Testament, that that's what they spoke about in the message of the Old Testament, placed this significance. The Messiah would suffer and he would raise, be raised on the third day. 
Well, now you may wonder, uh, as, as I have, well, where exactly is it in the Old Testament that predicts this special third day? Now, there are some, some very specific prophecies about the resurrection of, of the Messiah, and there are some third day implications associated uh, with, with some of those, but, but where is the one that, that just very clearly speaks of the third day? And it, it, I, was, I was inquisitive and you know, got my concordance out, and you, you start looking, and I found that there are a host of third day references woven throughout the fabric of Jewish history. It, it, it seems that, that, that the third day is a recurring detail, maybe a little, a little detail or off to the side, but nevertheless it's a detail that is attached to Jewish history. And, and, and of the little details in Scripture, you know, every word and every detail is very, 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 very important. That the Holy Spirit is the one that inspired Scripture, and every jot and every tittle has a reason for, for being there. And so all of these details are important, including this detail about the third day. And so th this presentation we're going to uh, attempt here is about the famous third days in the Old Testament. Uh, and maybe it will be for you, as it was for me, to, to, to think about how, how amazing it is uh, that how many important things happened with a third day detail that is attached to them. Almost as if the, the, the Old Testament was kind of a, a, of, a, of a picture book that you could flip through and on page after page and significant event after significant event, you have this little detail of the third day that is just woven in to these, these stories that shape the people of God and is just part of who they are. You find in them this third day over and over again. And so the culmination of, of all of these third day details must have impressed upon the mind of the people of God that something significant was going to happen on the third day. And then, so let us just re rehearse some of these famous uh, third day uh, things in the Old Testament and just take a, a quick little journey through Je uh, Jewish history and note this third day that is part of them. We're going to start off with, with Abraham and Isaac. Abraham, the, the man of faith who believed God, who gave him a promise that, that he would have this son, this son, this son of the promise. And then God comes to Abraham and, and he tests him and he says, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son, the, this son whom you love, and you, you take him and you sacrifice him uh, on the mountain that I will show you. And Abraham, the man of faith, after he receives this instruction from God, says he gets up early the next day and he gets his son and he goes on this journey and it says, and, and on the third day he saw the place in the distance. It was on the third day that he saw the place where the sacrifice was to take place. Moving along in, in, in Jewish history, and you have this a significant person, uh, uh, Jacob, and after he had left the promised land and he had gone off to, to eventually you know, get his, get his uh, family, and he stayed there for you know, two, I think 20 years or so, and, and God tells him, you, you need to, to go on back to, to, your, to your homeland, go on back to, to the promised land, and he gets his family together, and, and he flees, he flees his, his uh, father-in-law, uh, Laban, and it says uh, that on the third day, Laban was told that Jacob had left. And so Laban takes out in pursuit of Jacob uh, on the third day. Uh, the next one, you move a little bit farther in, in Jewish history, and you have this, this person of Joseph, the, uh, one of the, the youngest uh, sons of, of Jacob, uh, and all of his older brothers hate him, and they sell him into slavery in Egypt, and he was a slave for a while, and then eventually falsely accused and, 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 and put, put in prison for a while. And while he's in prison, a couple other prisoners show up uh, who was the, the cupbearer and the baker of Pharaoh himself. Uh, and each one of these guys, 
guys, or both of these guys, had a dream on the same night, and they were disturbed of, about the dream. And so they wind up telling, uh, telling Joseph their dreams because Joseph said he could interpret the dreams. And, and so the cupbearer says he, he dreamed of, of three branches. And Joseph says, okay, well, the three branches are three days. And after three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and he will be restored. And then the, the baker hears this and he says, hey, you know, I want to, you know, maybe it'll go good for me as well. And so he tells him about his dream of three baskets. And Jacob says, well, three days or the three baskets are three days. And after three days, uh, Pharaoh will lift off your head. And it didn't go so well for, for, for the baker. But nevertheless, the interpretation of both of their dreams had this three day element. And then the, then the scripture says, and on the third day was Pharaoh's birthday. And so on the third day, Joseph gets out of jail. And on the third day, uh, the, the cupbearer gets out of jail. Uh, you move along in, in Jewish history a little bit uh, later, and after Joseph uh, ascends essentially to the throne, to the second ruler in the land, and there's a, a great famine, and all the brothers that hate him, they eventually uh, you know, show up and were, are uh, begging for bread from him, even though they don't recognize him. And so, and so Joseph uh, gives them a, a little bit of a test, and he puts them all in jail. And he puts all these brothers in jail, and it says, for three days. Uh, he left them in jail to, to test his brothers just uh, for, uh, for a little bit. Uh, you move uh, um, a little bit, bit longer in, uh, in Jewish history, and after they have been enslaved in Egypt for about 400 years, and Moses is out, of, out in the desert, and he sees this burning bush up on the mountain, and, and he goes to inquire of it, and, and God meets with him there and sends him there, and he, he tells Moses, Moses, I want you to go before Pharaoh, and I want you to, to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, but he says, let them take a three-day journey into the wilderness. Wilderness. And so Moses obeys and he goes before Pharaoh. And the first thing when, when Moses first presents himself to Pharaoh, he says, you know, God says, let my people go, but let them go and take a three day journey into the wilderness. Well, of course, Pharaoh does not listen uh, to the uh, to the orders of God. And God begins to send the, the plagues and you get to the next to the last plague, the, the, the ninth plague. And there was a, a plague of darkness that Moses said would, would come over all the land, a darkness that could be felt. And this darkness would last for three days. Three days of darkness, almost prefiguring, you remember when our Lord was on the cross and darkness came over all the land from, from noon until three o'clock in the afternoon, the, 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 the three days of darkness or the three hours of darkness, a, a great a, a picture of what happened on our Lord on the cross. And then after the, uh, the Israelites, after the, they were driven out of Egypt, after the, the last plague, and they go, and they go to the Red Sea, and the, uh, the Lord you know, parts the seas, and they go through the sea, and they come through on the other side. And, and, and then it says they traveled for, for three days into the wilderness, and they didn't have any water. For three days they, 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 they traveled and, and there was, there was no, no, nothing to drink and they began to grumble. And on the third day they, they, they come and they, they, they find some water, but all the water is bitter and they couldn't drink it. And they cry out to Moses and Moses prays to God and God says, okay, Moses, you take this piece of wood and you throw it into the water and then these bitter waters would be made sweet. Just three days after the Red Sea, and they're thirsty, and they're crying out, and they come to bitter waters, but a piece of wood makes it sweet. I mean, almost like the cross. You throw the cross into the bitter waters, uh, and after three days, it will be made, be made sweet. Uh, after they, they left that and eventually they traveled along and they come to, to Mount Sinai to receive uh, the Ten Commandments to be heard from the voice of God himself. And right before th this happens, uh, they're told specifically in Exodus 19 and verse 11, to be ready for the third day. Be ready for the third day because something significant is going to happen on the third day. The Lord is going to come and the Lord is going to speak to you and something is going to happen on the third day. It's almost like this is the uh, behind the scenes message that kind of comes out from the Old Testament. Be ready for the third day. Be ready for the third day. And on the third day, they heard the voice of God himself. 
And you know the same is true after our Lord was crucified. We were to be ready for the third day. And on the third day we hear the voice of God himself saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And so it was with, with, with Israel when, when they got the, the, the Ten Commandments. And then as the, as the Lord uh, gives, gives Moses a more of the laws and some of the sacrificial laws that we kind of skip over in, in the book of the Leviticus, yet we find that woven in some of these sacrificial laws is this law that when, when, a, when meat was offered as a sacrifice, that, that it had to be used up and consumed within three days or it was no longer acceptable, that, that it was only uh, good for three days. Uh, and that is just part of the sacrificial system. Then after the, the children of Israel, they received the law, and they're, they're out, out Mount Sinai, and they've made the Ark of the Covenant, and the Lord sends them out into the wilderness, and they're led by the Ark of the Covenant. And the very first journey they make away from, from, from Mount Sinai, the, the scripture says that they went out and they traveled for three days until the Ark of the Covenant gave them rest. And then, as you know, they, they wandered around in the wilderness for about 40 years, and eventually they, they, came, they came to the promised land. But right before they crossed the Jordan into the promised land, Joshua tells them in Joshua 1.11, now three days from now, you are going to enter in. You're going to enter into the possession. Just wait, just three days, and you're going to get the promised land. It, isn't that a great promise that in three days we get the promised land? Well, eventually they, they get into the promised land. They sit some spies into Jericho, this first city that, that they're going to come to. And the spies will wind up in the, in the, in the house of, of Rahab. And she, she is a, a believer. And, and it's, it's found out that the spies are there. And so she hides the spies. And then she gives them this word. Now, I'm going to let, you know, let, let you down on the side. But you go out and you hide for three days. And then go on your way and you will be safe. And that is exactly what happened? They hid for three days, and then they were safe. A little, a little later on, this significant event as the nation comes into the promised land, and God is saying that you know they're to get rid of all these nations. But one, one city and one nation kind, kind of pulled the wool over their eyes, and they came out and they said, "Hey, hey, guys, you know we live a whole a long way, long ways away from you, but we've heard about you, and we we want to make a treaty of the, the, the peace with you." And so they didn't consult with the Lord, and they made a, a treaty of peace with, with the Gibeonites. And three days later they found out that the Gibeonites were neighbors. They just lived right there. In fact, they lived three days away, and they traveled for three days to confront the Gibeonites about this deception. Uh, you move on a little later as you flip the, the, the pages through, uh, through uh, this journey through Jewish history, and you come to uh, this, this famous judge of Samson. And he was a, he was a, a court jester. He was a real j j jokester. He was a comedian of the day. And he, he, he liked to joke around. And, in, and during his uh, wedding, wedding ceremony, the seven-day day ceremony, he, he had this riddle that he wanted to, to confound all the family members of his uh, thinking his, his soon-to-be bride. And he said, I tell you what, if you solve my riddle, I'm going to give you 30 pieces of clothing. And so he says, out of the eater, something to eat, and out of the eater, something, uh, something that is sweet. And it says, for three days, they could not give him an answer. And then they, they pried his wife and got the answer, uh, got the answer out of her. But, but they didn't know anything for, for three days they were in the dark. Just kind of like, weren't the disciples in the dark for three days? Uh, you, you move on a, a little bit longer and you get past the judges and then the people of the land, they, they said, listen, we want a king. We want a king like all these other nations. You know, give us a king, Lord. Give us a king. And so, so, so they go to Samuel and they said, give us a king. And, and then right about that, that, in fact, it was at that same time, there was a man from Gibeah who was the father of Saul. And he had some donkeys. And, 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 and the, the donkeys got, got away from the pen and they got lost. So, so this man sends his son out, Saul, to search for these donkeys. It's just, you know, just lost and found kind of thing. I want to find these donkeys. And he can't find them. And they said, hey, why don't we go talk to Samuel? Samuel will, will help us find the donkeys. And, 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 and after they get Samuel, it's like Samuel's waiting for him. And he said, don't worry about these donkeys that were lost to you three days ago. 
You know, because essentially that was just the means God used to bring Saul into the presence of Samuel. And it was after those three days that, that uh, Samuel anointed Saul to be the first king of Israel. The first king of Israel came right after this three-day search. Uh, toward the end of, of uh, Saul's uh, reign when he was uh, fix, f f fixing to, to make his demise. And in fact, David initially was going to be a, a part of this a battle against Saul, but he uh, wasn't able to participate in this battle. And he goes back to kind of his, his camp, which was, in, uh, which was in Ziklag. And it says on the third day, he, he reached Ziklag. And when he, when he reached this town, he found out that his town uh, had been sacked and all of his possessions and his family had been, been taken away and all the people are mad and say, hey, we got we to gotta go after our family. And so they go after these Amalekites that had attacked his family and they find this Egyptian that had been uh, kind of discarded by, by the attackers. Uh, and it says of this Egyptian that he hadn't eaten anything for three days and he hadn't hadn't had anything to drink for three days and three nights and and so they they got some information from this Egyptian and then they were able I think in three days to go ahead and to get all of their family members members back and then it just so happens that that just at this same time while this battle was going on that David wasn't a part of and Saul was that Saul met his demise and he was killed uh, he was killed by this Amalekite and the Amalekite takes the crown I think takes some stuff from from Saul and he runs to to, to, to David's camp and it says on the third day the man arrived at David's, at David's camp to tell him that Saul had died. And now it was open for David to be the king in Israel. And eventually all the people in Israel came together uh, and they had a big feast and a, and a big party. Uh, and it says that they were eating and drinking with him for three days before they anointed King David in Hebron. Isn't that interesting? All these little three-day uh, details that are involved in Israel's first king and Saul and then Israel's main king and David. And you have all these little three-day things attached to the kingship of the one who, who was on the cross, said, this is the king of the Jews. And then on the third day, everybody could see that he is, in fact, a king. Well, after uh, David has uh, reigned for about 40 years, uh, it comes down to kind of the, the end, of his, end of his reign. He sinned against the Lord by, by numbering the people, and there was going to be uh, some, some ramifications for that sin. And so God uh, sends, sends the prophet Gad to, to, to David to, to kind of give him some options. He says, okay, David, you can pick and choose what your punishment is. You can have, have three years of famine that's going to come on the land, or you can have three months of fleeing before your enemies, or you can have three days days of a plague that comes from the Lord. And, and, and David just says, let me have the three days. Let, 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 let me have the third day because God is merciful. And isn't it great that we get the third day? There's an, uh, another decision that's just so prominent uh, in the, the, the history of the nation of Israel. When you have David's son Solomon, and right at the, the first of his reign, when, when, when he becomes king, one of the things that solidifies David as the ruler uh, in Israel and as is, and is being a, a, a wise king is this decision he makes over these, these two women, and they're fighting over one baby. And well, they each had a baby. One baby was dead, and the other baby was alive and they were fighting, you know, uh, which, which baby belonged to which mama. But of these babies, the, 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 the scripture says that it was on the third day after one child was born that another child was born. And so it was the third day baby uh, that becomes a significant in Solomon's wise ruling on which child belonged to which mother that solidified him as a wise king. Uh, you have a, a, another very significant decision with Solomon's son, Rehoboam. And when he became king, the, the people gathered around him and they say, Rehoboam, listen, your, your dad really worked us hard. And so go a little bit lighter on us. And so, so, so Rehoboam thought, you know, well, let me think about it. And he said, go away for three days. And come back on the third day, and I will give you my decision. And so they go away, and, and Jeroboam and all the crowd, they, they, they come back on the third day. 
And then Rehoboam makes a decision that eventually divides the nation. That's when the nation split from Israel to Judah was after three days is when this division happened. And do you know a, a, another great division happened in the nation of Israel after three days? I mean, after our Lord was crucified and on the third day when he, when he rose from the dead, after that three days, it caused a great division in the nation of Israel as to who was going to follow the risen Lord or who was not. Uh, you move along to some of the, the time of the, the prophets and the great great prophet Elijah and, and at the end, the end of his time of ministering and, and God told him that he was going to be taken up to heaven and so the chariots of fire came and, 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 and took him up and Elijah was going to you know, take up his mantle and, and, and just, just pick up where Elijah left off. But, but all the prophets that were around Elijah, all the, uh, the second tier prophets as it were, were saying, hey, maybe we ought to go find Elijah. Let, let's go look for him. Maybe the Lord picked him up and put him somewhere else and, and, and Elijah, Elisha didn't really want to go along with it for a while. He said, okay, go ahead and look. And so they go out, and these 50 men, they go out, and it says they searched for three days, and they could not find him. And so it is of our Lord. They searched for three days, and they couldn't find him until eventually he showed himself to them. Another uh, remarkable event that, that, that happened with uh, one of the kings of Israel, one of the good kings, Hezekiah, uh, towards the end of his reign, he became sick, and the word came to him that, that you're going to die. And this uh, Hezekiah didn't didn't uh, like uh, that uh, that verdict, and so he he set himself uh, to, to, to prayer. And he said, "Lord, please, you know, I've, I want to live to just a little bit longer." And and the Lord heard his prayer, and he sent the, the prophet uh, uh, Isaiah to, to him, uh, and uh, and he told him that you're going to get well. And on the third day. You're going to be healed, and you will be able to go to the temple of the Lord. Well, uh, Hezekiah hears this, uh, this word from Isaiah, and he said, Now how am I going to know that this is going to be so, that on the third day I'm going to be healed? And, and so God gave him a great sign that the, that the shadow would go backwards, that, that almost God just, just, just turned the world the other way around a little bit. He, the, the sun went backwards in the sky as a sign that in three days he would be healed. And do you know that on the cross, when our Lord was on the cross, that God gave a great sign in the sky, and that the, the sun became dark, and, 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 and then in three days, we were all healed. God just kind of turned the world upside down, and in the third day, we are all made healed. Um, you get uh, to uh, another very uh, uh, mile marker in the history of the nation of Israel, and after they, they go into captivity, and they're a captivity to, to Babylon, and then, and then Persia, and eventually the Persian king uh, tells them that, that they can go back to, to go back to the land. And so, so Ezra uh, eventually gets a group of people, and they're going to come back to Jerusalem. And it's noted in Ezra chapter five, excuse me, Ezra chapter eight, that before that they, they left, that they camped for three days, and then they go on their journey and they make it back to Jerusalem, uh, and it says, and they rested for three days, that uh, they began their journey with the three day rest, and they ended their journey with the three day rest as they come back into the promised land, that a three Three days was uh, preceded their entrance back into the promised land. Uh, a very similar thing happens when Nehemiah, where Nehemiah again, you know, asked for permission to leave his position as a uh, of the I think the cupbearer of the king, and he goes back and wants to rebuild the walls, and the king gives him permission, and he comes to Jerusalem, uh, and it says, and after staying in Jerusalem for three days, then he goes and he inspects the walls. I mean, isn't that interesting that three days before these big changes of Ezra coming and Nehemiah coming and them being engaging in the rebuilding in the promised land, it's all preceded by this three-day detail that just happens to be uh, in, uh, in these, these accounts. I'm sure we're all aware of Queen Esther. Uh, after uh, she uh, ascends to her position in the throne, and uh, but yet there was this edict that goes out for the extermination of all the Jews, and 
And Esther is conscripted, say, hey, you need to, you need to go before the king and you need to, to plead for your people, uh, your, your people, the Israelites. And she says, hey, you can't go to the, to go to the king unless you're, in, you're, unless you're invited. And her, her uncle Mordecai, they, 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 they can convince her to go. And she says, okay, so I want all you, my friends, and Mordecai, my uncle, I said, I don't eat or drink for three days. And I won't eat or, or drink for, 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 for three days. And then you see an Esther 5 uh, and verse 1 that on the third day she presents herself to the king and so the king sets out the, the golden scepter and she eventually makes her request and the people of God are rescued. After three days the people of God are saved. Well that, that's just kind of a, a sketch through the, 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 the history, uh, the history books in, in the Bible and the history of, 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 of the nation of Israel. But let, let me point out a, another one here. And, and this is one that our Lord Jesus Christ specifically mentioned, and that is the account of Jonah. Where God told Jonah, says, Jonah, I've called you and I want you to go, go to this city, a city of people who are your enemies and you hate and you don't want to go there, but you need to go there and tell them to repent. Well, you, you know the account. Jonah didn't want to go, and so he went into the opposite direction. Uh, to, to, took a boat and was going. He's going uh, out, out into to the Mediterranean, but that didn't stop God's call or change God's plan. And so, you know, it's like Jonah, either by, either by boat or by fish, you're going to get to Nineveh, uh, and it wind up being by fish. And God provided a fish to swallow Jonah. And it says that Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And, and our Lord in Matthew chapter 12 and verse num number 40 says that just as Jonah was three days and three nights uh, in the belly of the huge fish, so too the Son of Man would be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. As though this account in the history of Israel, of Jonah and what happened to him, it was a picture, it was a foreshadow of what was going to, to, to come in the coming of the Messiah. And just like what happened to Jonah, that was what was going to happen to Jesus. This three days and three nights is not a, an insignificant detail. It foreshadows what was going to be with the Lord Jesus. And, and let me end here with a, a great promise of hope from the book of, from the, the, the book of, of Hosea. Just, just, just listen to this. Hosea 6, verse 1 and 2. Come and let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will build up our wounds. Listen to this. And after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will restore us that we may live in peace. I mean, how, how beautiful that is. After two days, he's going to revive us. And on the third day, he is going to restore us that we may live in his present presence. Uh, I, I, I tell you, you know, I find it amazing that in this brief sketch of Jewish history, just in this little sketch of Jewish history, how many of the significant portraits that are drawn for us of Jewish history, how many of those portraits have this little detail in it of the third day? It's almost like the third day is in this one, and it's in this one, and it's in this one, and, and, and it's in this one. And before kings are anointed, there is a third day. And before enters, entering the promised land, there's a third, third day. Or before coming back to the promised land after exile, there is a third day. Before getting the Ten Commandments, there is a third day. Even while they're doing their sacrifices, third day is written into the law and how they were to do the, their, 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 uh, their sacrifice. Sacrifices. After three days, water is made sweet. After three days, you're made safe. After being hidden, uh, the spies were being hidden. After three days, you get out of jail with, with Joseph and with, 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 with the cupbearer. All of these three days that are just woven throughout the history of the nation of Israel. I mean, the third day must have just been impressed upon the subconsciences of the nation. 
I mean, that their history almost calls out as it did before the Ten Commandments. Get ready for the third day. Get ready for the third day. You know, something significant is going to happen on the third day. And we read in 1 Corinthians 15 in verse 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian church, he said, this is of utmost importance. I mean, this is where the rubber meets the road. I mean, this is all it here. And what, is, what it is is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. There is nothing more significant than Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. On the third day that all of the Old Testament pictures and all these little details just shine all their little flashlights to this great big light of Jesus being risen on the third day, the first day of the week, the Lord's day where we'll come in a couple of days and join together in our Lord's worship. Now, now even though some of you know, I, you know, I am a, a good Thursday kind of guy because I like the, the three days. We won't get into that. But even though I'm a good Thursday kind of die, guy, I do hope that this Good Friday special is, is encouraging to you and to your faith. That, that as you read the, the scriptures and we believe what, what God foretold would be about Jesus and we believe in him and who he is and, and why, what he did and, and all of these details that, that we believe in because they're so and they're true. And, and I, I hope it bolsters your faith in Jesus' life, in Jesus' death, in his burial, and in his resurrection that was on the third day, the most famous of the third day events that has ever happened. So I hope you have a blessed Good Friday. Blessings to you. Uh, and Lord willing, uh, we will meet again soon. Thank you.